set to activate Bahamut. Ready for Master Rule 5. Go. Hi guys, Freaky Fish Guy here with another video for you today. Uh, so, obviously, like I said before, with my bandit discussion, uh, a few of the decks that are water themed that have come up a bit, one of them being Paleo, are a bit more playable now. Um, my Paleo build at the moment is not the most optimal. I'm still waiting on a few things uh, to come in a post. So, this build will change, especially as the meta becomes more um, distinguished as such. After every ban list, you're going to expect, especially like one like this, that back row decks are going to be more played. Just because people don't know the combos that are being played yet, people don't know um, what they can experiment with as such, especially as a ban list like this, hit most of the combo decks. So, this build in mind, especially, is meant to deal with the initial back row decks you'll see. So, say if you've got like a locals coming up, or regionals in the next few weeks, maybe take a few ideas that I've told about, I've spoken about, sorry, from uh, this video, and go in to your event with a bit of a clearer mindset. So yeah, expect things like Altergeist, Guru, maybe some True Drake events that are still around. Um, decks to also look out for that people are playing more Heroes and Dinos especially. Those are two decks that are looking a lot more playable in the new meta. Orcus will still be a thing, but hopefully by, the, by now you should know how to combat this. So starting off with our Paleo deck profile, obviously we are going to play guys three Swap Frog, Everyone knows what it does. Uh, discard a water, special summon it on summon, send a aqua monster. So you want to send your Ronin Toden and your dupe frogs to the graveyard. Uh, next we have obviously two, uh, sorry, three dupe frog. Uh, my supers are in my marine sus deck, so this deck is actually probably quite low rarity. I quite like the common dupe frogs. I like the old nostalgic look the card art has, um, with the card frame, sorry. It's quite nice. Uh, dupe frog, while it's on board, your opponent can only attack the dupe frog. Is this a relative effect now? Not so much. Uh, when it is sent to grave though, you do get to add a frog monster. This is a when effect though, so it can miss timing. You always want to add your swap frog. Then finally, two Ronin Toden. Banish your frog from grave to special summon it. It is really good at link climbing, also just toad material. That's the frog engine summed up. The next two monsters we're playing, we're playing two Lilith. We're only playing two because I don't want to see too many in my opening hand. It can be a bit of a clog if you open two Lilith, that's why I'm only playing two. If you feel like you want to play three, obviously please do. Um, so yeah, normal summon it, tribute, set, uh, set one of three traps at random. You always pick to reveal three of the same trap, just to guarantee you get it, so you maybe pick three trap check, things like that. Dodges hand traps, really good card, good access. You can still play both as well, you can summon the Swap Frog and the Lilith by discarding a water. The only hand trap, mainstream hand trap we are running in the deck Triple Nibiru. So I said earlier this deck is to beat um, back row decks. That does not still mean though, guys, combo decks are, gonna, are not going to be in the meta. So things like um, Dinosaur, uh, things like maybe Six Sam, people testing out a lot more rogue options. Uh, rockets are still an option. They lost Ib, but I still know one of my best friends uh, plays Rockets without Ib, and it's still a very scary deck. So this is just here, just to give us a little bit of leeway. Um, obviously, Triff topped a, an event with... Uh, Electrumless and One Servant Pendulum. So combo decks are still going to be a problem. This just means that we don't get too left behind if we lose a die roll and we can even things up. We can always deal with the token very easily. That was all of the monsters guys in our deck. Moving on now to our spells. We only played two spells in the entire thing. Two Pot of Desire. So banish 10, draw 2. We're not playing extravagance because we do not want to banish uh, all of our copies of Toad or our links or anything like that. Um, Demise is obviously now gone as well. I never liked Demise in this deck, so I'm actually not too upset about that. But this is the best option we have now. We can't really play Avarice, because we are never going to have that many monsters in Grave. Moving on now to the traps. Paleo lineup, three Dynamiscus, Expert manu uh, Removal, discards for not cost, that's an important thing, discards and resolution. So if they negate it for any reason, you still do not lose hand advantage. Three Olanoids, MST, really simple effect. This is obviously the one I usually search with Opabana, so I can pop some back row. Um, three Candina, Book of Moon. We're not playing Bakea because I don't really see the point in having uh, my, uh, Paleo cards in hand. They should always really be set. You don't really want to have to keep one in hand for the Bakea. And then finally, two Morelia just to send um, basically Foolish Burial Goods to send Trap to Grave. My usual target for this being Lost Wind because it is obviously live in Graveyard. You can send a Paleo, but there's not much point in sending two Paleos to Grave because obviously it itself is a Paleo when you can just send the Lost Wind and then grind from there. 
We all know what Paleo do. When a trap is activated, they get to summon them. Obviously, the trap has to be the last thing in chain because it is a when effect. Other than that, they are a two foul, sorry, 1,200 attack monster at level 2 aqua, so they can make Toad. I've seen variants of like Lost Wind Dinos that might be something to test around in the future because they do count as normal monsters on the board. Other three, other three, other three hand trap as such. Free Imperm, roundabout, really good trap card, just negate the Colman Gate, can be sneaky at points. Um, this might be more relevant coming up because it will stop things like uh, maybe Manifestation, uh, Final Battle, if they don't use the Negate, negate effect. Um, just It can be more important where you place this card, so true, do try and think, especially if it's a long grinder game that back row decks usually have, where you're putting your Imperms, guys, okay? It can win you the game if you're smart with it. Obviously against Pendulums, just put it in the uh, Pendulum Scale uh, zone. Free Lost Wind. Uh, this is really important now because you, you can, in battle phase, in damage um, calculation, uh, half something. So always really important. You can do this to um, Conductor, which makes it permanently a 1,750 attack monster, which is quite small in comparison to what it should be. Also negating its effects, so it can only attack once. This because this has won me so many games against Dino in testing. Um, against Hero, you can put it on the Dark Claw just to make sure you can actually still access your graveyard with your Paleo. Dark Claw is probably this deck's current problem because uh, heroes have seen quite a lot of play online whether this will be uh the same thing at regionals will be a different story because obviously we have not had a big regionals in the current format i'm expecting lots of heroes there also spiral this card against spiral you'd probably side out because last resort can't be a bit of a problem otherwise though i really like lost wind pretty good card uh three compulse so this is a really good card because it just it's non-destruction removal um uh, back when Thunder Dragons were a problem, this was a really easy card to out their board. Unfortunately, Thunder Dragons probably won't see that much play anymore, apart from maybe a combo, Appaloosia and like Titan Turbo, but don't expect too many Thunder Dragon players at events coming up. Um, other than that, it's still really good uh, removal. It is a one-for-one, one, so you do not need to discard anything. I see a lot of people playing like Phoenix Wing Wing Blast ages ago. This is many, many, many years ago. Compulse is just a better option. Um, you can be sneaky as well with this by bouncing, say, your, your frog pieces if you're going to drop an Nibiru. Bear in mind though guys, also, if you drop an Nibiru on your board, your Paleo pieces, as far as I'm aware, still stay because they are unaffected by monster effects. So if you nib and you've got Paleos on board, the Paleos will still stay. So you don't need to bounce them, uh, obviously because they will be banished. Otherwise, really good removal card. Moving on now, this is my current little bit of spice, just because I am uh, still finding some other cards to replace them, but three Dust Tornado. Um, so this card is here just because uh, we are, like I said, maybe into a back row heavy format. Just at the start of the format, this will change as um, decks get tested and we find some more combo decks and they come back from this uh, ban list. This, for no reason, should be Heavy Storm Duster. I just, for some reason, can't find mine. Um, plus, I am a sucker for nostalgic cards and I love the art on these cards. Pretty much as it is, it's just an extra MST copy of All Noise that still triggers your traps. It does have the extra effect you can set a trap from your hand. Um, this could become quite like funny if you still need to payload in hand to discard for Dynamiscus. In the end phase, you just pop a back row, set the, set the trap, and then use that trap in your standby phase. Like I said, guys, this should just straight be a free Heavy Storm Duster. Uh, you could do two Heavy Storm Duster because the last card I am playing is obviously Trap Trick. I only actually own two Secret Trap Tricks, so this should be your third copy of Duster should be a Trap Trick. Trap Trick just accesses the rest of your trap cards in your deck. It can be extremely good. I was playing this with Reckless Greed at one point because you can Trap Trick in the end phase to search Reckless Greed. Obviously, draw two in your standby phase, basically allowing you to draw three cards for turn. Um, we're not playing that anymore because I've uh, added in the desires instead. The main targets for this being things like Compulse, Lost Wind, um, Dynamiscus. Bear in mind though, guys, it does lock you out of traps for the rest of the turn. So, end phase, this for Duster, pop to back row, really, really nice combo. Other than that, it just access you any trap you need. And if you have three, you can reveal three off Lilith. So guys, just a small little thing as well, I just want to input there. reason we are playing three Dust Tornado, uh, a.k.a. MST, uh, like I said, more back row decks, so things like Altergeist Manifestation, Altergeist Protocol, uh, Soterra Final Battle, um, like all the Solemns that you might see that are set, we are just going to play as much back row hate in the main as we can. So 3 MST doesn't seem a lot, but you back this up with uh, 3 other MST, Olenoids, 
Uh, free Dynamiscus, which is also back removal as long as it's face up, so it can hit the uh, Solterra final battle. Adding a Trap Tricks, and suddenly you're playing almost 12 copies of Bakra Hate. Just by playing three additional uh, MST, like I said, this can be Heavy Storm Duster as well. Um, just to maybe blow up a bit more back row. This is why we're playing so much back row hate. Uh, while the format changes, this can be changed again for some crackdowns, etc. Okay, just so we're all clear on that point. That is the main deck then, guys. 40 cards at the moment. Might be 41. I can't do maths. Uh, moving on then to the Esh deck. We are playing, obviously, triple totally awesome. I currently have about six or seven toads just because I play frogs in so many different decks. Really good card. Thankfully, it is not an Abanist. This could... Be a, a target for the Master of Five ban list. Um, just because if people start to turbo up Toad via other ways, it shouldn't really be a problem, and I doubt it very much. But just, just throwing the idea out there, guys, just be aware of that. On top of that, we're playing uh, Anomalocaris and Okubana. Uh, Paleo XYZs, they are unaffected by monster effects while they're on the board. So again, if you have Nib in these, these just still stay. Um, this is Strident. This is just search any trap and activate traps on hand. We all know what they do by now, they are very good cards. Moving on then to our linked monsters, guys. We are playing two Mr. Boy. Uh, once Marshall 5 comes out, we will not need to play that many Mr. Boys. It's just there to make uh, more arrows as such for things like uh, your XYZs. Funny thing you can do with this, you can uh, spam up Ronin Totems and make this into uh, Mr. Boy. Bring up the Ronin Totems again, and then you have a Link 4 option or a Link 3. It's just as a Link Climbing Arrow. Another Link Climbing Arrow uh, is an enemy, so you can summon a Swapped Frog off of this, which then triggers effect to dump another frog. Small little combos, it just makes Link Climbing again a lot easier. Do bear in mind though, when you use this effect, you are locked into water for the rest of the turn. Other monsters. One Imduk. So I'm testing this just because while I still can. Uh, one normal monster. The important thing is it on start of damage stealth when it attacks a monster it points to, it can destroy that opponent's monster. So it's sort of like a pseudo grandma where it just pops something before damage for calc. It could be a nice removal option. Otherwise just play um, I don't know, another crawl an enemy or maybe uh, a nightmare Cerberus, something like that. The nightmare, one Phoenix just to pop pesky back row. One, shooting Code Talker, just to clear lots of boards of like tokens or things like that. Uh, and maybe net some draws. If I can pick up the card. <laughs> one, Trisbania. And one, Topologic Bomber Dragon. C funny things with these guys, if you summon a Paleo to the zone they point to, these effects will trigger, but the Paleo will not be destroyed. So you're sort of like Orcus, where you're playing on your opponent's turn. If I have a Bomber Dragon, and I go trigger the Paleo on Grave to summon, Bomber Dragon then trigger on a new chain, destroy all monsters on the board. Paleo will still stay because it's unaffected by the monster effects of Bomber Dragon. And you can do this as many times as you have Paleos in the grave. Same thing with Trisbania, the Paleo will still stay. Um, this is quite a funny thing to do, especially if your opponent likes to spam out boards. You have uh, a free Regeki at all times, effectively. We are now playing Volcanics. Moving on then to finish our extra deck, we are playing one Borosword Sword and one Borrow Load. Uh, this OTKs, this steals your opponent's board. Borrow Load can may maybe be cut now because Thunder Dragon boards are going to be a less of a problem, but we never know what the new meta will be, so I like to keep them in as they are. You can make this quite easily, like I said, with the Ronin Toden um, link climbing up. Moving on now then to the side deck. Side deck's always a thing that can change per person. That is perfectly fine. My side deck currently for Palo. Uh, two Crackdown, we can side these out for the Dust Tornadoes or the Heavy Storm Dusters if we're playing a Monster Heavy deck. Uh, two White Howling, basically this is Imperial Order on Crack. So if you have a Palo or Toad on board or Frog, you can negate every spell effect your opponent controls for the rest of the turn or they activate for the rest of the turn. Really, really, really good card. It's in pure order without the downsides of having to pay life. Obviously, though, it is only for one turn. This next card, a um, little bit of spice. I absolutely love this card. Please don't play this if you ever think of playing a deck properly. Two Diamond Dust. So the reason this is here is because uh, this card's effective. Destroy all water monsters on the board. Then deal 500 points damage to your opponent for every water monster destroyed. This does count your own monsters. Uh, my first thought was originally just... If you're playing a mirror match and we have to go like, I don't know, second or first or something against Mermel, which could see a lot more play, we can play this just to pop their board. Then I thought, why don't we just trap trick for this in time and blow up our own board and deal the most, I don't know, snobbish battle damage we can in the game by basically burning them for like 500 per paleo on board. I've yet to test this, but it can mean that uh, as a back row deck, if we do go to game three, 
we can somehow win and burn damage. I'll be testing that and see how we go, but I wouldn't play it for a serious, uh, serious event. Free evenly matched, go second. Blow up the back row, really simple. Uh, like I said, Guru and uh, Old Guys could see more play. This just clears their board and lets us play when we're going second. Moving on to Monsters we are siding. Free Lava Golem, we can play without our normal summon. Um, playing this over sphere mode just because we can compulse this back to our hand and like have a bit more fun. We can crack down this, have a, again a bit more fun. Um, it's okay, like again I'm not expecting a too monster heavy meta at the start, but it's just there in case we need to play against pendulums and they make too many uh, negates for us to deal with. Finally, free Inspector Border. This nearly won me a game on its own at Locals the other day. It is still a pain to deal with and uh, 2k is not something to be afraid of, okay? It can be a very nice beater. This was my Paleo deck profile, guys, for the start of January 2020 uh, format. This could change, as I said, quite a lot going through the different formats. If monsters start to turn up, we take out the Dust Tornadoes slash Heavy Storm Dusters for more monster removal, such as Crackdowns, things like that. The extra deck special change as I go to more important events, I expect that to be a more sort of um, competitive side deck, maybe involving the Solemn cards, things like this. Maybe some more back removal that are uh, quick play, so I can play them going second against Floodgate decks. Other than that, guys, if you have any hints, tips, or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. I always like to have a discussion. I make an effort to answer every comment I can see, and I will see you guys next time.